recently at New York Fashion Week um, with our support. Savio, why don't you give everyone a bit of an insight into, into that journey and, and that experience, starting here from India through to perhaps when you showed in New York and some of the, the trials and tribulations and some of the things you found difficult along the way. It's in because you are the future of India and you're the future of Factory Fashion Week. So I would first like to thank all the students and all the young designers who have made it to the seminar because it's actually for you. Thank you. You see, I got into fashion by default because I was getting into medicine and then somewhere along the line, I wasn't very happy with what I was doing and not many people know that I went through seven years of almost intense pathological depression because, you know, the education system in India kind of pushes you or, you know, there's a lot of peer pressure and by the time you're 15 or 16, you have to decide what you want to do and that's not really the time. So you can either become a doctor or an engineer because everything, the, the total education system in India is totally compartmentalized. And then I decided that I would kind of, I, I didn't want to really rebel against my parents because they were wonderful parents, very supportive, but I wanted to get into a career in fashion at a time when fashion was totally non-existent in Calcutta and Calcutta was kind of the armpit of fashion in India. So uh, I had my trials and tribulations with my dad and I had to leave home and I, let, I stayed with a friend for a very long time and then I came back and I lied to my father and I applied to NIFT and once I got out of NIFT that year I got all the three major awards that the institute had to offer and I had all the all the jobs, including a job in Paris, which I didn't want to take up because I was, I was absolutely determined that I want to start my own label. And my parents completely freaked out because I come from a very middle class family and for us, the main criteria was to earn money. So at that point of time, when, you know, all of you will go through this when you graduate, a lot of you will get great offers uh, to take up jobs and internships with people. A lot of you might want to start your own label because the best knowledge is when you play with your own money and you make mistakes and you learn never to make those mistakes again. And there will be friends who will kind of snigger at you and there will be people who, because you know, everything in India is about how much money you are earning. But uh, you know, you are not creative people and for you it is very important to dream on and along the way realize that dream. Uh, for a few like us, like for me, I was incredibly lucky. You know, in my third year, I got picked up by one of the finest stores in the world. And that I still remember when Albert came to buy my clothes and uh, when he finally said, we are going to buy you, I broke down in tears. I was, I was sobbing and he looked at me and he smiled and I said, you silly little Indian boy, you have a long way to go. But you know, it never really ends because you, you keep dreaming and you dream and there will be a lot of problems that you'll face. You know, today I did a huge fatal mistake of dropping out for one season because when I'm, when, uh, because at, at this juncture in my career, I thought that was the most, uh, that was probably the best thing that I could do because when you're working in India and at the same time you're trying to be a global brand, you have to be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because it's totally two different sensibilities. Because in India, so my business model is when I work in India, I, I, I actually at times sell my soul to the devil and do in India, but you know, you don't really stagnate. I was willing to sacrifice my ego and say that fine, I don't want to become the best designer in India. Even if, if I become the 43rd designer in the world, I'll still be happy because it's a natural progression. So I went to Milan. I didn't have an agent. I didn't have a showroom. I didn't. So I spent a lot of money and I did quite a good collection because that same collection was picked up by Browns, but I didn't have a single buyer. And I don't have that kind of money to spend. I didn't have a sponsor. But then I said that maybe somewhere down the line I have made a mistake and I need to rectify it. And so when I had to go back to New York Fashion Week, I still had to spend a lot of money. I still didn't know whether I would get buyers, but that doesn't stop you from exploring. And uh, I went to New York about a month before Fashion Week and Fern put me up with the best people in the business. I, she said that you need to get an agent, you need to get some, someone who has a showroom. You need to, you, and, and you know, uh, when you do Fashion Weeks outside, it's a whole lot of protocol because there are some stores who don't even want to pick up, pick you up in the first season because they want to... You see, the problem with us is that India has a perception of poor quality, bad deadlines, 
and people being unprofessional, and we have to battle all of that, you know, uh, not yet boxed by what people perceive India to be, and surprise them. And once people know that you have, uh, you know, you have the backup to deliver, they keep coming back to you because I think. Right now, there's a big shift in fashion that has happened. I think uh, as people are, you know, I think we have reached a saturation point in our lives where everybody wants to escape. You know, people, you know, uh, it, I call it this uh, return to innocence because everybody's getting back to...